Hello, everyone. My name is Yilin, and these are my co-authors, Shijia and Mohans. We're from Penn State University. Today, we will introduce our work on 3D hand pose tracking using EMG variables. So let me begin with a brief introduction on our motivations. First, 3D finger pose tracking has a lot of useful applications in the user interfaces, like AR and VR, sports analytics, sign languages, and haptics, etc. So ex especially web-based web -based augmented or virtual reality applications are becoming more and more popular today, which leads to the standardization of web's XR APIs. So for example, there's some kind of uh, remote surgeries and virtual teaching of cooking, sports, and et cetera. So now let's talk about some existing work. So, so existing work on 3D, tra 3D finger tracking. There are many recent works in computer vision that tracks 3D finger pose from the monocular videos. However, the vision-based techniques are affected by the issues such as occlusions and the need for the good light condition to capture intricate finger motions. In contrast to vision, the main advantage of variables in, is in enabling, enabling ubiquitous tracking while being robust to the lightning and the occlusions. But the variable gloves with the sensor in are intrusive and limit the finger motion range. And for other sensors, like IMU, EMG, and flex sensors, the existing, words, uh, existing work only explore classifications on discrete gesture without providing free from 3, 3D false tracking for arbitrary hand motion. So therefore, we want to present our system, Neuropose, which fills this gap by literature, literally design, designing the EMG variable based 3D finger pose tracking technologies. The Neuropose uses an off the shelf mile sensor consisting of eight EMG channels. Then it captures the finger motion to get the EMG signals and then convert it to the 3D hand pose, like this. So here is a short video demo showing how our system results looks and how, and also the comparison with the depth camera. So before we move to the techniques of our system, we want to briefly talk about the background about human hand motion. So unlike discrete gesture classification, in order to reconstruct hand motion in 3D, we need to know the joint angle of each finger. Generally, finger motion contains the flexion extension with 15 degrees and the adduction abduction with six degrees. So in total, they form a 20 y dimensional angle space. Then by applying some constraints of human hand like this, we're able to reduce the dimension to 16. That makes the problem simpler. So now let's move on to the core techniques we applied in the system. As the figure show in the screen, 
We use encoder decoder architecture for converting our input multi-channel EMGs signals to the output continuous hand pulse, which is here represented as 16 dimensional joint angles. The encoder and decoder part on the side are basically built by the convolution layers. Between them, we add a red state containing several residual blocks. We found that by adding this kind of skip connection between these blocks, the network will exploit the deeper layers in between the shortcut connections to learn stronger features than the basic model. We will do the compression and discuss this result more later in the evaluation part. So we also think that training separate models for each user will be burdensome. So the question would be, is this system robust to different users? So therefore, we explore domain adaptation strategies as, is for, as the following. So we first pre-trained a model with one source user. And after that, we get some kind of small amount of data from different new target users. Then we can apply semi-supervised domain adaptation techniques to find the model to adapt to new users with a very low training overhead. Also, in order to ensure real-time performance with our system, we need to constantly process previous five seconds of data at any given instant. Then for the encoder-decoder architecture in the previous discuss, the powers of consumption can be very high due to the redundant computation. Therefore, we explore an alternative model with a recurrent neural network, which is called RNN, to obtain real-time performance without redundant computation. For each cell of this network, we use the long short-term memory, which is the LSTM layer in particular. So then we will briefly show some kind of the main evaluation results of our system neural pulse. Here is our evaluation platform. The user came and wear this kind of mild armband with the channel four towards up. This gives the training data. And while the mild sensor provides EMG data for 3D pole tracking, the leap motion sensor serves as a ground truth for validation as well as provides labels of training for training our machine learning mode. So overall, we conduct the user study with 12 users, um, eight males and four females. The users are aged between 20 and 30. The weight between 47 and 96 kilograms. This figure shows the error of joint angles in degrees over these 12 users. The model without domain adaptation has median error of 9.38 degrees. On the other hand, as we can see here in the figure, the semi-supervised domain adaptation technique not only decreases the median error to 6.24 degrees, but also cuts down the 90 percentile tail bars dramatically. Also, our system shows some robustness to different conditions, including the sensor position changing within a day and the sensor position changing across the days. And we also show some robustness on wrist position changing, including configurations of normal, up, down, bending, and even mobile containing the rotations and also shows graceful degradation in accuracy over 
finger motion speed. Also, this graph shows the CDF of error compressions, compressions over various techniques and previous works. We notice the neural posts, which exploit deep, deeper features by combining the ResNet and encoder-decoder architecture, outperforms other techniques dramatically, both in median case and in the tail. In particular, the median accuracy is about 6.24, and the 90 percentile accuracy is about 18 degrees. So, overall, our system neural pose uses a feasibility of fine-grained 3D tracking of 21 finger joint angles using EMG devices for the arbitrary finger motions. And also, we developed fusion of anatomical constraints with finger sensor data into a machine learning algorithm for higher accuracy. And finally, we also do some implementation on the embedded platform and in an extensive evaluation over the device's users. So that's all. And thank you very much for your listening. I will be very happy to answer any questions.